Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another beer review. And I look like a complete fucking mess today. Um, I've sort of got this like um, faux Cuban revolutionary um, attire. My hair's a bit greasy and it's all over the place because um, it's been warm today and uh, I've been over at my, uh, my grandma's house um, helping her pack some things away. And uh, she's got this like massive roll of um, bubble wrap. And because it's packed so tightly, there's like so much static in there, and it's just like, just given like an explosion of greasy and wispy hair. So uh, I'm going to stick with it. But um, yeah, today we're venturing back into the Beer 52 Can of the Year box, and uh, we're looking at the second offering that was in my box, uh, the 10 can box from Tiny Rebel. And this is the Framboozy. Or would it be Frambootsy? I'm not sure how it's uh, properly pronounced. Uh, but this is a, let me just read that, a sour raspberry framboise. Or framboise, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. That's very ignorant of me. But uh, yeah, 4.3%, so it's a nice raspberry sour beer. So I'll quickly read you what it says on the, uh, the taste notes in the Ferment Catalogue. Catalogue magazine. So described as being like a drive-by in a fruit aisle, this sour framboise delivers sharp fruits, sharp bursts even, of flavour better than fresh punnet of raspberries. The sourness isn't face-bendingly over the top, and the fruit flavour is not overtly sweet, giving this beer a satisfying and refreshing tang. And I have it on good authority from uh, friends of mine, aka Craig from Kent Beer Reviews, and uh, a couple of other of the chaps who actually after i've recorded this video we will be doing a little bit of a discussion drinking session um of some of the beers we're from the beer 52 can of beer box uh, myself craig from kent beer reviews and dean from dean's beer reviews so that would have already been uploaded of course and uh yeah hopefully you enjoyed it if not i'll put the link down below as well as dean's and craig's links two great guys and uh you never know, we could have a massive falling out actually on the stream, so that um, would be quite awkward, but no, I doubt it. I don't think I'll ever fall out with those guys. Love them to bits. And um, yeah, so looking forward to that. And I thought I'd at least have a beer ready for when we start the stream. And with the weather being really nice today, or well, nice, I can't deal with heat, and I'm going to Germany in less than a week, so um, that's going to be interesting. Although I'm going to have a lot of beer to cool me down. But uh, yeah, Tiny Rebel. I hadn't actually had any of their beers. So the other one that you got was the Dutty. Which uh, links in the description. Spoiler alert. It was an okay pale ale. But it suffers from what a lot of session pale ales suffer from. The body was just too thin for me. No fault of the brewer. It's just the style itself. It doesn't really do much. But um, yeah, I'm hoping that this will be a, a nice uh, sort of twist. And a bit of a change. But uh, yeah, Tiny Rabble. Um, a brewery that I've heard so much about. And seen their beers so many times. And yeah, I've not even tried the likes of Club Tropicana or Quatch or however it's pronounced. I always forget how it's pronounced. I've been told so many times how it is actually pronounced. But I always forget because I'm quite ignorant and a little bit stupid. Let's be honest. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to delving into this one. And I'd love to try their like Stay Puff and the Imperial one. And they're doing some really nice sort of um, flavoured beers recently which I'd be interested to try but um, yeah so I thought I'd give this one a go for today's review and of course if you've been interested by any of the beer 52 beers that I've reviewed on the channel I'll put the playlist for those as well as their website and of course my referral link so I can get a bit of a discount and you can get a bit of a discount as well on your own box but um, yeah, I've had some really intriguing beers from Beer 52. And I think with, um, uh, is it Chris from Partisan or formerly of Partisan now involved? Um, I think that they're going to be doing some intriguing things. I mean, the next box after this is dedicated to South Africa. I've never had a South African beer. I've never even had a macro. I don't even know where you, where you buy them. I know sometimes they come through. But um, yeah, so... I probably will end up reviewing all of those on camera just because of how intriguing it is. Might even do like a week's worth of reviews just dedicated to that one. Um, haven't reviewed all the cans uh, in video form from this month's box. Um, 
but I will be doing a, a, a roundup on my uh, blog that I've, I haven't actually created yet and probably might not have created. So if there's a blog link down below, it'll always appear in the description. Anyway, I'm waffling on already. We're five minutes into the beer review. So using my beer varna glass. And uh, yeah, let's see what this is like. Uh, I think the only other Framboise style beer that I've had was probably by the likes of Lindemann's. I'm not too sure. Um, it is a sort of um, area of brewing, if you will, that I haven't ventured too much into. I mean, I do like sours like Gozers and uh, I'm really starting to warm to Berliner Weisses as well. But um, yeah, the sort of um, like traditional, well, they are traditional. Gozers and yeah, Berliner Weisses are traditional. You know what I mean, though, like the Lindemans and the, the Boons and the Gl you know, You know what I'm talking about, the Lambics and those sorts of beers like Duchesse du Bonnier and you know, the accessible ones I've had. I've not really had anything too exclusive or any canty. I've not even had a canty on beer as of recording this review. Um, so here's my... Oh, I didn't have a craft beer card anyway to give you as a forfeit. But um, yeah, beer in a glass then. And that is a lovely, hazy... In fact, it's not even like haze. It's just like a solid block of colour. Lovely, vibrant, raspberry readiness to it. But uh, yeah, you can't see through that at all. And when you hold it up in the right light, that is so nice and vibrant. But beer didn't really pour with any head whatsoever. But um, yeah, it certainly looks nice. So let's give it a twist. And give it a sniff. The old twist and sniff method. And that's what I was expecting. It's not too sweet on the nose. You do get that sort of like yeastiness coming through. Quite bready. It's got that like mouth-watering juice sort of character to it. But you definitely pick up those raspberries. Is it raspberries? You can tell that I'm not too well-versed in fruits from my uh, manly dad bod figure. But um, yeah, it's got that sort of like funk to it. But it's not too much. But at the same time, it's not too tart or harsh on the nose in terms of the raspberry character. It smells really nice. It's got that raspberry juice sort of sniff. Anyway, smells good. I think it's the perfect weather for it. Let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. That's really nice. You get more of that... I don't know to my voice then. You get that raspberry character more towards the back end. At first, it's quite bold. Uh, in terms of its body for what it is. It's bold and light at the same time, if that can actually exist. Definitely get that breadiness, that yeasty character coming through. It's almost to the point that, even though for my palate, um, I would say it's a little bit too much, but to a seasoned palate, it would be very low down. Um, it's just my flavour preferences of beers like this the bready yeasty tones can get a little bit too much for me. Um, almost goes into that sort of overbrewed black tea character or herbal tea almost. But this, it's just about right. Not too tart. It's not mouth puckering at all. Um, in fact, it's not puckering in any way, shape or form. It's nice, crisp and refreshing at the same time. I know everything I've described about this body completely contradicts itself. But it's drinkable, but bold, but not too bold, but not too light, and not too carbonated. It's rounded, and it's got a level of smoothness to it. Definitely get those raspberries in there. Just the right amount. If you like your raspberries, you're going to like this one. Uh, sometimes they can be a little bit too watery, um, but at the same time, when it's flavouring, uh, it can be just like way too sweet. This is pure raspberries. Like, you know, you get those ones where they're a little bit tart. They're the ones that I really like. That's the sort of character I'm getting. And that sort of, like, slight breadiness from the yeast in the beer almost has that uh, very subtle, like, white bread character. So it's like you spread some raspberry jam on toast, but it's not being sweetened too much. I like that a lot. That's really nice and refreshing. Just the right amount of tartness in there. Yeah, I can't really fault that at all. 
Um, I don't really have too many examples to compare it to, so I can't really comment on the authenticity of it. But if you were to present just a glass of this to me, I'd have thought this was like a product of Belgium or that sort of area of Europe. So I suppose it does have that authenticity to it. But um, yeah, they've done a really good job with this. They really, really have. It's, about, it's literally like pouring juice into the glass. Not the haze juice sort of stuff, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, I like this a lot. And I'm not usually the biggest fan of these sorts of beers. Or these specific styles of um, uh, sour beers. But yeah, it's accessible. But there's enough there for people who like sour beers to appreciate. And it's a perfect sessioner for a day like this. If you had too many though, I could imagine it get a little bit acidic. It does have that character about it. But uh, yeah, two or three cans of this spaced out through a session. It doesn't have to like, clear your palate. It doesn't leave too much residual flavour there. So it wouldn't really impair uh, most beers afterwards. And uh, yeah, with just like a nice cheese board, some bread, cream cheeses, maybe some hams, maybe like some salami or chorizo, that sort of stuff. I think that would really complement that perfectly. So yeah, in terms of a rating, I'm going to give that one a very solid 9 out of 10. So uh, yeah, that's Frambruzzi, the Raspberry Sour Framboise from Tiny Rebel. A brewery that I'm finally, I'm glad that I'm finally getting around to trying some of their beers. And, you know, it's all thanks to Beer52 for providing a couple of their beers for me. But, um, yeah, so check out Tiny Rebel. Check out Beer52. If you've tried this before, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Uh, do you think it falls in line with the style? Do you think it stands up with, the, with some of the more well-established uh, examples of the style? Uh, the authenticity? comments on that. Are you a fan of Tiny Rebel? Are you a fan of these beers in general? Uh, if any of my friends and fellow beer tubers have reviewed it, then their links will be down below. Um, I think with this, it's solid, but not... It's solid, but... How do I say it? Solid, if not unremarkable. And I think that's okay. Because not every beer has to be a heavy hitter, do you know what I mean? It's nice to just have something nice and simple, accessible, crushable, sessionable, and uh, yeah, this is one of those beers. And I think it gets a good score because of that. So yeah, 8 out of 10. What did I say? Yeah, I'm going to go with 8.5 out of 10 actually. Because I think I said in initially 9 out of 10. Yeah, I think it deserves an 8.5 out of 10. But um, yeah, if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. And I shall hopefully see you all later. Ciao for now. That's so wrong to say ciao for now.